I now, now I don't know how to turn it off. All right, there we go. Where's the vacuum? Bring back the vacuum. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We've got uh, UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer here. We'll uh, open it up for questions. Uh, please use the raise hand function and, and wait for me to call on you before asking a question. JJ, you can start us off. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, JJ. Can you just talk about the excitement level this uh, Monday as you guys set to open the 2022 season? Yeah, I mean, you'd like to say that it's no different. Uh, but it obviously, as we talked about that last night as a team, you know, just the natural response of the emotions that go through your body, you know, you get a little more butterflies, your hands get a little more sweaty. Uh, it's just getting closer. And that's the way the, the Lord made us. And uh, we need to understand that. So the excitement level is very high in the building and we have a great opportunity coming Saturday. 
Jeff, what does it mean to you guys that you guys are kind of the hunted this year? Like no one's going to, you're not going to catch anybody by surprise. Well, it's a level of respect we're proud of that we've gotten our program to that point. Uh, but it's a new season, you know, it's a new team. So it, we can't rest on the laurels of what the first team did or the second team did. This is the third team. So it's their chance. They have an unbelievable opportunity Saturday. You know, you have a top 25 team in Houston coming here. Uh, most people predict them to be the New Year's, you know, bowl, you know, cotton bowl. And uh, what a great opportunity in the Alamo Dome. But I will say that there's no way we beat Western Kentucky. There's no way we beat UAB without that crowd we had last year. And we're going to need them again Saturday. Okay, Greg. Jeff, you've talked about Houston's defense and they were the best third down defense in the nation last year. I was wondering if you've noticed anything, what leads to that level of success and how do you prepare to contend with that? Well, Coach Belt does a fantastic job. Uh, they have a great scheme and they have great players that believe in that scheme. Uh, they're very physical. They run to the ball. They play with a great confidence. And uh, that's pretty much the sum of all great defenses, right? And uh, that's what they are. Okay, James with the Cougar, we'll go with, we'll go to you. Yeah, Jeff, I know you all feel good about what you've done within the secondary and guys you brought in and returners, but can you just talk about some of the challenges the Houston receiving core presents, especially with Tank Dell and just. Yeah, well, it, it starts with the scheme. I mean, Coach Holgerson has done such a fantastic job for years. Anywhere he's ever gone, they've moved the football. They've always <laughs> gone the ball well, but, you know, that receiving core is different. Um, they're, they're extremely fast and they catch the ball very well. And the Roger catch is fantastic as well. But I think coach Holgerson deserves a lot of that credit just for what he's done through a, a lengthy career over and over and over again. Okay, Greg, we'll go back to you. Jeff, what's the state of your guys offensive tackle position at this point and that, that left tackle spot in general, what's the, how close are you to having a starter there? Or are you still looking at a couple guys right up until game day? Yeah, we're going to compete all the way to the game day and we'll, 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 we were still rotating the ones, the twos around, let them get after it. And uh, we hope to have that decision, you know, finalized by Friday. You mentioned early in fall camp, kind of wanting to see how the tight ends group would develop and it would kind of set the tone for some of the personnel decisions you would make this year. What's your impression of, of those guys behind Oscar and what they've shown you? Yeah, well, Dan, uh, we really expect him to come on and he has. And uh, Gavin's been playing for a while for us. And uh, those guys will be the first three you see out there Saturday. How do you compare kind of the strengths of the offense when you go with an 11 look versus when you have two of those guys out there at the same time? What are the differences that that brings to you? Um, well, it's a way to rest those receivers, but it's also, you know, we want to be able to run the football as well. We don't want to be a team that's just, just drop back and throw whatever snap. So uh, I know we've got great receivers, but uh, we're, we're committed to run the football as well. So we'll, we'll be in 12 personnel um, and 11. And uh, we'll have some 10 personnel packages as well, but not near as much as we will 11 and 12. I, I would expect it, Greg, to be the same as it always has been. Uh, you know, heavy 11 with a, a third of 12. And you got to try to run football, in my opinion. And uh, it might not hit early, uh, but as the game wears on, you hope some of those plays become bigger. Is there any consideration at all, or have you thought about potentially playing some sets with two backs, given the, the new depth that you have there, if you can keep everybody healthy? Um, yeah, you always have a little bit of that in. We just haven't ever had enough depth to do it. Uh, it's early in the year, so uh, there's, there's a possibility that could show up Saturday. But, you know, if we were, we wouldn't want to tell them. Okay, if you're just joining us, use the raise hand function, and I'll call on you. For questions, JJ, Jeff, how good is this Houston team you guys are facing? Is this one of the best teams you faced in your tenure here? Yeah, there's no doubt. I would say arguably the best. I mean, I would say UAB obviously is in that category always. Uh, the BYU team uh, was a top 25 team as well. Um, so yeah, uh, they're. You know, their quarterbacks returning, the great receivers are returning. Um, 
you know, I just their defense just plays differently. They're a top ten defense nationally, and uh, it's just an exciting time for us. It's just a really good opportunity for us to see how good we are. Uh, we're different in the sense that our first year, you know, we didn't know what we were at all. Uh, the second year, we knew exactly what we were because everybody was returning. <laughs> and this year, it's kind of more like real football. You got basically half your defense gone, three starters gone on offense, a, a great kicker gone. So we got to fill in some pieces. And I've said this on a couple of radio shows already today. What's so unique about college football is high school, you have scrimmages, NFL, you have preseason. College, you just beat up on each other all the time. And uh, we're, we're, it's time to play somebody else. We might not be ready, but it's time to go do it. And we'll know a lot more after 6 o'clock Saturday. I know y'all won't be able to tell y'all I know exactly what it's going to be like. Nobody knows. And if they do, they're, they're kidding if they think they do. Okay, Sam. Hey, Jeff, what do you feel best about your squad right now? Ooh, um, I like it that I've got four starters on the back on the offensive line. That's always comforting. Uh, I like it. I've got a three-year starter back at quarterback. That's very comforting. I really like our receivers. That's very comforting. Uh, I like the depth we've got back at running back. Defensively, I think we've gone out and replaced those pieces that we lost, uh, but that remains to be seen. Uh, I think we've replaced the kicker very well and sack it. But that, you know, obviously remains to be seen. Uh, I like the camaraderie of our team. I like our confidence. Uh, I just don't like our schedule those first three games. <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage that with, with your team? Because obviously that's it's not just a physical test, but it's a mental test as well for you guys. How do you manage that with your guys? I think the biggest key is to not – go fanboy, don't go media, don't – you can't play all three of them at one time. And I know that sounds like this coach talk, but that's very daunting when you look at all three of them, right? If you just look at them one at a time, it at least gives you some sanity that you – you know, you got to figure out a way to get this first one. And then then you might could start looking down the road. But you got to go one at a time because that that's – as I repeat the word daunting, that's, that's three – arguably top 25 teams in a row. Last one for you. You mentioned the defense, uh, and I think in coaching school you talked about a little bit about Belk. What is it that stands out to you about the way they play and, and what Belk has done over there at Houston? The confidence they have in him. You can just tell they believe in him by the way they play. They play extremely hard. They've recruited very well, and uh, their schemes are great. Uh, they do a good job of mixing up some things. Uh, but what stands out the most to me is their belief, their physicality, and uh, the speed that they show over there. Greg, back to you. Jeff, what did you learn about Will Stein during your guys' time living together, and what was that period like? Oh, Will was really good for me. Um, you know, he knew that system very well, the West Coast offense. He had been a quarterback in it. Um, so he was just, you know, I got to go all ball because my family was back at Gilmer. I was making the, the change from high school to college. And uh, we just literally talked football nonstop. And you can imagine two roommates, uh, me not being the head coach, that was really hard on me. Um, not that there was anything Charlie was doing wrong. I just used to being the boss. And Will knew, you know, Will quarterback for Charlie. And uh, he knew him very well. And he was just a really good sounding board for me and him and I literally just talked ball uh, nonstop. Will is, he's as sick as I am. And we're not a good match around our wives when Darby and Carrie are together with me and Will. It's just a disaster. But that's all Will and I do is literally talk ball nonstop. So he's a really good young coach. Uh, I'm really excited to see what he does with our offense. Uh, we, we align philosophically very well, as does Matt Maddox, because Matt was with us at Texas as well. So just a good young coach. I'm excited he's getting his opportunity, and I, I want to help him achieve all his goals. Yeah, when you had those conversations, did you find that, you know, philosophically and the things you believed in kind of meshed right away, or did you have to meet in the middle at some point? Were you on the same page? No, it, we, he came from a great high school program. He played at a great high school program that was very unique in their offensive style. And it just so happened our, our philosophy 
lined up with his philosophy. And um, I knew if I ever got my chance, he would be a guy that I would get in there pretty quick to call it for us. And um, I'm, I'm really excited for him. How important was it when you made that decision this year to elevate him that he had been in this offense from the ground floor of the installation? How much does that help him now as he kind of takes the reins of it? When we got together, uh, you know, with Coach Lunny, Coach Maddox, my brother, you know, Coach Turner from Gilmer, uh, Coach Burke, who also played in this system, uh, we wanted to combine a lot of these things together. Uh, I was not familiar with the West Coast offense, uh, so that I leaned on him and Burke uh, to really, you know, coach me up, which they had done a great job of that uh, when we were at Texas together. My my background is more of to hurry up and play fast, way more like Baylor's version, which is why we had, you know, Matt Maddox involved in this from the jump street. And we just sat down and said, look, it's not going to be the Gilmer offense. It's not going to be the West Coast offense. It's not going to be the Baylor offense. This is going to be our offense. Let's just start from scratch. To this day, when I want to run inside zone, uh, I find myself still using the Andy Griffith verbiage of me calling Floyd and Clara you know, who was the, you know, on the Andy Griffith show when that's not the term we use for inside zone anymore. I just still find myself speaking in those terms occasionally because you can imagine when you've called that offense for 15 straight years at Gilmer, that, that's what I want to not happen here. I don't want Will Stein calling it what they called it at Louisville. I don't want Matt calling it what they called it at Baylor. And I don't want my guys here calling it what we called it at Gilmer. This is the UTSA offense. It's a it's a, a mixture of all those things uh, that we built together, and uh, we, we we did that intentionally, Greg, because we we anticipated success, uh, we anticipated people stealing our coaches, and we did not want our players to ever have to just learn new offensive terminology. This has been the same verbiage for these kids now, going on three straight years. And and Will's experience actually calling the plays is limited to just a couple of high school seasons. What was it about? him and what he's shown you that told you he was ready for that opportunity at this level this year? Again, that's where, uh, not to, to dispute what you're saying, but Will's been the passing coordinator. So when we when we plan those third down fours, six, eights, tens, those are Will Stein's thoughts on those game plans, right? So even though Barry Lunny Jr. might be the one calling the plays, those are Will's thoughts. You know, Matt was the run game coordinator. Those run calls – Obviously, it all went through Barry. It all goes through me. But when it gets put on that piece of paper, those ideas come from all those coaches. So, uh, yes, he might not have been the one actually opening his mouth and saying the words, but Barry was just opening his mouth and saying the words off a piece of paper that we had all sat down and agreed upon through the week. But it will be different. I agree with you. It still will be different when you're the guy – that's having to say the words versus the one uh, reminding the coordinator of what we had said all week. Okay, Raul. Hey, Coach. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, good to see you. Um, hey, Coach, I'm sorry if you've been asked this before I, uh, already. I got in a couple minutes late, but, uh, you know, just the buzz around San Antonio, you know, with the UTSA football and the momentum you generated last season, um, can, can you feel that, just sort of the, the, the growing buzz? And uh, is there any added pressure on you or the kids, or do you try and uh, keep that away from them? Or uh, just, just you've been talking about just the buzz around the city. Yeah, it's been very exciting. Uh, you know, we have people at practice all the time now. Our boosters are so supportive. Uh, just everybody's been so helpful. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a fun uh, trend, rise. Uh, as far as the pressure, I think last year with the success that we had and the undefeated strength went so long, I think our kids got used to that, right? That was each week. That was uh, – we had a bullseye on our chest. So I think our kids are kind of used to that. And we're an underdog starting the season out. Um, no one's picking us to win. You know, we're, we were a, a touchdown underdog early. Uh, so Houston, the top 25 team. Uh, I don't think if you poll many people, they're expecting us to win. So uh, our guys know we're a, a heavy fate underdog. And uh, we, we're just excited that we have an opportunity to play in the Alamo Dome in front of our fans. And, and I've said this numerous times, we don't beat Western Kentucky. We don't beat UAB without them. We need them all there. We need Sosa to outperform Houston's band. We need our cheerleaders to outperform their cheerleaders. 
We need our fan out supporting our fans. And obviously, as coaches, we got to do our part and our players do as well. Thank you, Coach. Back to you, JJ. Jeff, uh, looking at your defense, how good can that side of the ball be this year? You know, it's, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, we've got some guys back that have been playing for us for a long time, but we've got a lot of new faces over there as well. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm excited to find out, JJ. Uh, we'll know Saturday at 6 when it's over because we're playing a very, very good offensive football team. You know, Coach Holgerson has done this for years. He's dialed up a lot of people. So uh, I think it's very important that we maintain a sense of confidence and composure in ourselves, no matter what happens Saturday. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a really good football team, JJ. It, it, it seems like on the defense, you guys are setting up to play a lot of guys on that side of the ball. What are the advantages of that? And what are some of the challenges? The challenges are just the packages, you know, communication, getting them all out there correctly. Um, the, the, the positives is a lot of guys are playing, uh, which we've always been committed to doing since we've been here, which helps in recruiting because they know we rotate. So they know if they're in the two deep, they're going to play, uh, even the three deep in some positions for us. Uh, but it's just the, it's the challenge of communication, first game, a crowd, you know, it's deafening in that place. There's no place like that Alamo dome. Uh, it's as loud as any place in the country and just communication and getting them all out there and get them off the field. So when I'm sitting here in the media after the game that you guys aren't uh, crucifying me for like a poorly coached team for having too many men on the field or not enough out there. Hector. Morning, coach. Hello, brother Hector. You doing all right? Fantastic. We're still undefeated, baby. <laughs> so, uh, you mentioned being an underdog um, this this Saturday. How, how often is that talked about among you guys? You know, I don't believe it matters in the game. I do believe it matters every day at practice. If there's if I can use anything to make go practice hard, I'm going to do it, and that's what makes you play better on Saturday. The, I don't think the old win one for the Gipper. We're an underdog here at the Alamo Dome is going to matter Saturday before the game speech. But I do think it helped last night. We had a very spirited, intense practice on the, on the old intramural field last night. And uh, it's always good to go back down there and remember where we came from. Yeah, I, I, might, I might be reading things differently. But while, well, like, you know, the line would, would suggest you're an underdog, I think a lot of folks are expecting a very competitive game on Saturday. So if you can just speak to what that says about your program, you know, that you lose a couple of key guys, especially defensively, obviously since you're on offense and here you are expected to hang, if not potentially beat the 25, the 25th best team, 24th, depending on the poll, best team in the country. Well, that's a compliment to the first team and the second team, right? That's why that's the way it is. The third team's got to go out and show what they're about. So, uh, and I, again, I'm going to make this comment. We don't beat Western Kentucky and UAB without an unbelievable fan base. We've got to have those crap, that crowd. They've got to be there for us and be loud Saturday. And when Clayton Toon has the ball, it's got to be deafening. And when uh, Frank Harris has the ball, it's got to be use your library voice. Thank you, Coach. Okay, Adrian, we'll go to you. Morning, Coach. Kind of piggybacking off of Hector here. You've got these larger caliber opponents on the schedule. The first three games of this season is probably harder than any three-game stretch we had last year. And going into these, is the is the preparation, not physically, but mentally, philosophy, is that a little bit different than going into game weeks last year when you've got these larger caliber opponents? You know, I've thought about that a lot. But if, if we sat around here, and we just predicted last year's schedule, who would have predicted us to be Illinois? Not many did. Who would have predicted us to be Memphis on the road? You know, not many did. Um, but the difference is they were kind of spread out last year. You know, this year it's three right in a row. I think it's very important that we don't look at it that way because that seems almost like a too huge of a task when you look at all three. When you go one at a time, at least gives you some hope in your mind. Like you just got to play them one at a time. I know that sounds like coach talk, but it's so true. Um, and when we're done with that three game gauntlet, did we come out healthy? Do we have some confidence for the last nine games of the year? Back to you, Greg. 
Jeff, when we were getting ready for the start of the fall, you mentioned that one of the things you'd be working towards or keeping an eye on this year is the concept of whether the program is built to last. And as you went through the preseason, did you see the right attitude or approach that you'd consider a step in the right direction in that sense? Well, there's so many things have improved here. You know, like our kids used to not get hardly any food whatsoever. And then we would have to go down to the calf, you know, to get the food. And now we have like food here in the facility. Our, our players, as soon as they're done with practice, they get choices of food, choices of vegetables, choices of protein, uh, as much as they want to eat, not, not, rationed off i mean it's like a division one football program now that's huge we now have a nutrition center in the weight room where our kids get you know shakes and they get to choose whether they want spinach whether they want protein what fruit they want what flavor they want it's just it's like college football around here now are we all the way there no we are not we, we've got some things we've still got to get crossed off uh, but we're moving in the right direction and uh, we just got to go keep having success, Greg. So our fan base stays excited. Our boosters keep giving so we can get this done. And I really, I know I've said it for so long now. This is a sleeping giant. But it's going to take work. It's going to take effort. It's going to take people in the community giving. Now we've got NIL to deal with as well. It, it's, it's hard. Uh, but if it was easy, everybody would do it. Uh, and this is a special place. I know we've got fans out there and boosters. They're going to help us get over the hump. What are the more immediate steps in that sense? There's certain things you're pushing towards even within these next few weeks or during the season as far as the infrastructure goes? Um, I, we can't get anything done this year, really, Greg, just because, other than boosters, you know, continuing to do NIL, that's immediate. But as far as down the road, you know, I think recruiting uh, is going to be where that the base of that's going to have to be of uh, just getting, you know, uh, a, a staff uh, to help with just studying the portal studying JUCO, studying the high school kids, uh, where our coaches are not having to, you know, do double time on that. That's the next, uh, and I'm sure Dr. Compost is it like, he's never going to stop, right? But it's just college football. It's just the way it is. JJ? Jeff, going back to uh, Greg's question about the uh, kind of bull don't care mentality and being built to last. How has that been received by the players? They understand what I mean. Um, you know, the built to last deal, you know, it's, we, we've heard a lot of those comments. We're a flash in the pan. We're, we're, we, we can't sustain this. Um, and the only way you prove them wrong is by going out and stacking your third great year together, right? Uh, the bull don't care deal, it's just literally – no one cares. I mean, I know, like, while I go Hector's point, we're, a, we're now down to a four-point underdog. That's considered a compliment. I, that in itself is an insult, that that's considered a compliment. We're playing at home. We're 12-1 and one at home. Uh, we've only lost to Army here, and that was back when we, you know, they broke Lowell's ankle. So I, I want to get this thing to a point where, we, where we're always favored in the Alamo Dome. And uh, we're not. We're an underdog, and that's because of Houston's success. But it's also still the doubt if UTSA is legit or not. Sam? Jeff, I wanted to follow up on something you just said there about the recruiting staff. I have noticed some Power 5 programs devote a person or people to just college scouting in the portal. Is that something that you think is going to become prevalent uh, throughout the FBS, and, and and how does the potential elimination of coaching, you know, limits factor into that, especially for programs at your level? Um, my personal belief, I wish they just put it at twenty and let them do whatever they want to do. We don't need more than twenty. I mean, I think that'd be fine if we had twenty coaches and that's all we did was get to coach all the time, and we had a recruiting staff and that's all they did uh, was uh, do you know, evaluation and recruiting, uh, that would, it's going to be modeled at the NFL, in my opinion, it's going to be modeled after the NFL, uh, the ones that run it very, very well. And look at the coaches that have had the most success. You know, those guys have some NFL background. They know how to do that. And because uh, if you're a very well-run NFL team, you've got somebody that's all they're doing is looking at the other team's roster. So whoever thinks to go on the practice squad right now in the NFL, the teams that are very well organized, their departments already know where the best players are. They're just going to snatch them off those practice squads. 
well, it has to be the same in college. We've got to know where those guys are on the portal that we can go get that have ties to San Antonio that want to come back. And right now, you know, that's our coaches double timing that. And I think the better programs have, you know, five to 10 to 20. Uh, I don't think we can get to 20. Uh, Dr. Campos really will pass out, but I do think we can get to three to five where each one of those, that's all they do is JUCO transfer portal high school and report back to our coaches. And not to even mention on campus recruiting, you know, when you have the game days, I mean, you've got a lot of kids here. There's going to be a lot of kids here Saturday. Um, and we've got to get that where we've got a department that kind of handles that for us. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us this morning. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate y'all very much. Thanks. God bless. Birds up.